From far and wide Oilers fans, this is Dolany TV. And welcome back to another edition of Edmonton Oilers Talk. You're sitting here playing video games and all of a sudden the old Trade Center alerts ring up in the headset. And yes, sir, the Oilers have pulled the trigger on another defensive trade this afternoon. And I, I, I honestly don't know what to make of it. The trade being Kajula and Garrison for Manning and Norrell from the Chicago Blackhawks. Here's the problem I have with that. And I think it's a very obvious one for every single Oilers fan out there in the history of the Oilers that have watched Connor McDavid play hockey. Brandon Manning? Yeah, that. Brandon Manning is headed to the Edmonton Oilers to play on a team with the same guy that he injured all those years ago. Man, oh man, the turns of hockey, hockey realm is insane. Now, we've seen them have bad blood before, but I think Connor McDavid's going to welcome into the fold full heartedly. So, what did we give up? Like I said, Drake Kajula and Jason Garrison, goodbye, get gone. Thank you very much. That feels good. So Drake Kajula, I was very critical of him yesterday in yesterday's game. And guess what? They solved two issues in one day. Yesterday I was complaining about Weidman and Kajula. And the Edmonton Oilers in two trades today have dealt with both issues. That's absolutely incredible. Peter Shirelli actually making moves and making not half bad moves considering the guys he is bringing back. Norell is currently in Sweden. We'll talk more about him in a second, but we got to get to the point of interest in Brandon Manning of the Chicago Blackhawks. Now coming to the Edmonton Oilers, he's played what all his years in Philly. The problem is Brandon Manning is a is a tough guy. That's the problem. Brandon Manning is a tough guy to kind of read and uh, read and weep, if you know what I mean. He's been a Tough guy to deal with as an opponent for the Oilers for a couple years now. And now it's a banner of he's not really doing much offensively or defensively by the looks of it. For the Chicago Blackhawks averaging 15 minutes and 28 seconds time on ice. A goal and two assists for three points in 27 games and a minus 14. That's, that's ugly for Brandon Manning. But the thing is, remember what we gave up for him. We gave up Drake Kajula and Jason Garrison, who any defenseman in the NHL is an upgrade on Jason Garrison, considering I would rate him as an AHL bottom four defenseman, honestly, in my mind. So right there, that's a massive upgrade for the Oilers. Yes, you know what? It's another Peter Shirelli quote-unquote win. But either way, look at it this way. Like I mentioned, the Connor McDavid situation with Brandon Manning. Guess what Brandon Manning's not going to be doing unless they get into some crazy bar fight at uh, the ranch or something in Edmonton. Guess what? He isn't going to be injuring Connor McDavid no more. Let's go, boys. That's a good feel, good, positive thing for us for sure. And now let's go double check the uh, stats on Manning career-wise here. He's had 43 points in 207 career NHL games. And realistically, over his career, he has been a whopping... Uh, well, minus 16, so not as bad as it might look. He's been a minus 2 in Philly for six years and a minus 14 in Chicago this year. So is he really that bad of a player? I don't think so. Let's go talk about Robin Norrell a second here, but I just have to answer a message as quickly as possible. Yeah, so there we go. Another trade for the Oilers. Robin Norrell in there. He's 23 years old, five foot eleven. 180 defenseman. There we go. Let's go. I didn't know Robin Norrell was a defenseman. Learning stuff as we go along, boys. He's played with Rockford for a couple of years, and now he's out in loan in Sweden. That gives the Oilers two defensemen in loan, and he's really not that big of a point getter at all. He's put up uh, weird years all across the board for him. You see here, uh, Sweden World Junior. Uh, he, he's not a point getting defenseman, but a defensive guy at five foot eleven, 180, possibly a. Uh, or 5'11", five, five 192, possibly another guy like Chris Russell who just blocks the shot and gets the job done. He's 23 years old, so you got to imagine that he's going to probably come over next year if the Oilers are still needing him or else he'll be another trading chip. Not exactly sure what the plan is here, but we'll see what uh, what's going to happen. With continual employment of Nicholson and Shirelli, I will now cheer for the Flames. Let's see. Before the trade, here's a stat from Oilers Nation. 
was fifth in Oilers goal scoring with seven goals. Oilers now have four guys with 10 plus goals and no one else near it. Closest is Darnell Nurse with five. Yeah, that's a, that's a hard one to say for sure, but oh well. Side note on this, Kajula and McDavid were close. Well, they damn looked the, almost similar at times this year. Kajula just got traded for Manning, who was involved in the play that injured McDavid in his rookie season. Like I said, we scratched that off the surface. It doesn't matter. So now what do we give up in Drake Kajula? Drake Kajula is an absolute disaster of an Oilers forward. He's been a guy who has had chance after chance to come in and capitalize, come in and get the job done for the Edmonton Oilers. And he, eh, if he feels like showing up tonight, he'll get it done. If not, whatever. And then he gets sent back down the lineup, kind of sits and floats for a while, and then comes back up to the top line, back down to the fourth line. And the guy, I mean, yeah, sure, the lineup versatility, whatever. It's great to have. But uh, seriously, I am not that big of a fan of a guy like Drake Kajula who's had 11 points in 29 games. You can complain all you want about him being the only goal-scoring forward on the Oilers when it comes to him being fifth in goal-scoring, whatever. But guess what? That is not a thing, oh, Drake Kajula is that good. He's fifth in goal-scoring. No, it's that terrible of an Oilers team. And now it's a time for things to step up and a tie ratty to step up. Continual reps in the lineup. Honestly, if this is a move that we have seen from Shirelli, this is more of a move we've seen from a guy like... Mr. Head Coach Ken Hitchcock. That simple. Hitch, obviously fed up with Kajula and his lazy, terrible, terrible approaches to the hockey. And then you've got Jason Garrison, who's floating, doing absolutely dick diddly nothing. Honestly, to get two defensemen who can step in and be in our top six every single night. Now, what do you have? You have a guy in Manning and Petrovic. If you want to keep... I don't know, say Gravel and Jones together or Gravel and Benning together. Now you've got actually three lines while well, we're missing Sekra, Clefbaum, and Russell that can play defense. This is a transformative thing. And guess what? I would not be goddamn surprised if we saw a guy like, a guy like Matt Benning get the heck out of here. You know what? This is, yeah, okay. The reaction's coming in. I'm reading it real time as I try and explain this. Four you guys at home who are saying, oh my God, it is so terrible that we got rid of Drake Kajula and Jason Garrison. Guys, Jason Garrison was a friggin' PTO walk-on that only had a job because of how terrible our defense is. So shipping him, no problem. Drake Kajula, I do not, you know what? I don't understand this. Everybody's sitting here freaking out that we traded Drake Kajula, but every other game, Drake Kajula is an idiot. Drake Kajula is the worst hockey player the Oilers have. We need to get rid of Drake Kajula. Then we finally friggin' do it, and the Oilers still, the Oilers fans still are not impressed with what Peter Shirley does. You know what? This one is not on Peter Shirley. Like I said, this is a Ken Hitchcock move. That's all it is. It's Ken Hitchcock saying, hey, Peter, you need to get me some guys who want to play hockey. And you know what? Maybe Brandon Manning's going to be that guy. I'm not sure. Uh, you, 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 can't, you can't sit here and gauge what is going to happen in a trade just because some names were put on some paper. Come on, guys. Like, let's grab a grip as Oilers fans and hold on for a gosh darn second. Come on. It is frustrating. It is absolutely frustrating to see guys absolutely lose their mind. Any trade. You know what? Friggin' Peter Shirelli could trade an Oilers broken stick for Sidney Crosby at this point, and you guys would friggin' complain. Come the heck on. It is absolutely ridiculous. Get over yourselves. Give these guys a chance to play hockey for the Oilers before you write them off for crying out loud, and let's see what this Oilers team can do. Come on, guys. It is absolutely ridiculous. Get over yourselves. Get over the fact that Peter Shirelli is going to make moves. And as an Oilers fan, you're not going to agree with it. Do I agree with this move? I've already told you I don't fully support it. But come on. These guys haven't even played a game for the Oilers. That guy's in Sweden. He won't be, if he's coming over to play for us sometime this year, he won't be here for at least a week due to immigration. So cool your Jets, guys. It's not like trading Drake Kajula and Jason Garrison make the Oilers a lottery pick contender. Come on now. Come on now. Grab a friggin' grip. That's all I got to say there. That's all I have to say there. And I think that's why I should leave it because I'm very angry at just seeing the outpouring of 
idiotic reactions on Twitter. Come on, boys. Like I said, grab a grip, grow a set, take a second to stop and think before you, oh my god, Peter Shirley made a trade. I got a, I got a tweet out how terrible of a GM he is. <laughs> Come on. Grow up. Grow up. It's as simple as that. Anyways, I'm Tyson. This is Stolen TV. I will catch you in the next one.